there are several sexually transmitted infections which cannot be cured and one of them is herpes. Now, herpes is not curable but it's treatable. So we are going to see this later on. But herpes is caused by a virus that we call herpes simplex virus that causes the cold sores that you usually see around the mouth or on the lips and a genital herpes in men and also in women. So we can get those uh, genital herpes and also cold sores from this infection here. Now, you might experience reoccurrence of this infection because of several reasons that you are also going to see later in this video. And uh, uh, it's very easy to get this infection. You can actually be having this infection without knowing. And still, when you are still asymptomatic, you can still be transmitting this infection to other people without knowing. So you don't actually need to have the symptoms for you to transmit this infection. But I don't, you don't need to get worried because it doesn't cause a serious infection apart from now some of the cosmetic issues. And also we have a particular category of people that might be affected by this infection more than others. Herpes, like we saw earlier, is caused by HSV, which is herpes simplex virus. We have two types. The first type is HSV type 1, which usually causes the cold sauce, which you are going to see around the mouth. And also it can cause genital herpes in rare occasions. We have uh, HSV type 2, which causes uh, genital herpes mainly, but it can also cause cold sores. Now, let me explain here. Because HSV1, in case you have those cold sores around your mouth, you so happen to meet your partner and maybe you have oral sex, you can transmit this HSV to them and they're going to get their HSV. Uh, it will still be HSV type 1, but this time it's going to cause genital herpes. Now, you might also be having HSV type 2, but then if you have oral sex with your partner, you're going to transmit that, maybe it was on your genitals, you're going to transmit that to their lips, and uh, this HSV will still be HSV type 2, but it will now be causing the cold sores. Now, the reason why we say that HSV type 1 mostly cause cold sores is because Research has shown that it's most likely going to be found there. So you're most likely going to isolate HSV type 1 around the, the lips, around the mouth, and type 2 around the genital. So this is why we usually say that uh, mostly you're going to find HSV type 2 around the genitals. But it doesn't mean that you cannot find them elsewhere. Now you can have the infection by both strains, HSV type 1 and HSV type 2, we, at the same time, so you might be having both of them, they might be in any particular part of your body. HSV type 1 and type 2 can be found in saliva, also in semen, in vaginal secretions, and also from the exudates from the source. Now you see those blisters, when you break them, uh, that fluid can come with the HSV either type 1 or type 2 depending on what caused that blister in the first place. Now, it takes around 2 to 12 days for the infection to come and clear. So, uh, the first uh, infection can take a really long time. It can take even up to two weeks to clear, sometimes even three, sometimes in a month. But the subsequent ones will be just coming maybe uh, two days, three days, one week, it's gone. Anyone can get HSV. But um, HSV1, which is now the most common one, and uh, this one is not mostly associated with sexual activities, but uh, it mostly contacts people when they're still young, during the childhood, because um, it's very easy for you to get something which is contaminated because of crowding. Maybe you're playing with other kids who, who maybe have the same. Maybe your parents would want to maybe kiss you. They have that infection. Maybe they don't know because they know symptoms. They give you that, so you get that. It will live with you forever. But your immunity here will play a very important role of keeping that thing in check. Anything that will eventually go to the mouth, it can have the potential of transmitting this infection. Happy simplex infection is quite common with uh, two in every three people having acquired this infection by the time they are getting to their 50s. We have general symptoms which are very obvious because you, you are going to have blisters around the penis, you have the scrotum for men but they're not for women. For both you might find uh, those uh, blisters we are talking about near or around the anal opening. We have something that we call prodrome syndrome whereby you feel the effects of an infection before a physical manifestation. Like you feel uh, some tingling sensation, itching or burning around where those blisters will form. Swollen lymph nodes because they are also trying to fight off this infection which is not going away so they might swell. For pregnant ladies it's very important for you to always make sure that you don't have this infection before you give birth because 
they can have very drastic and uh, very fatal effects on the unborn child because you are going to transmit this infection to them during the childbirth and it's going to give some neonatal herpes that can lead to blindness we have brain damage also skin infection and also death it's part of that so it's very important for you to always make sure you don't have this by getting screened in case you've had this infection it's good to go get screened by a doctor to ensure that uh, during this period you don't have that infection and in case you have this infection uh, they put you under medications that will make sure by the time you're giving birth you don't have those things in case you already have this herpes and they are close to giving birth or maybe by the time you're giving birth you already have this hsv cesarean section is always recommended to lower the risks once you're infected by herpes the virus will stay in your body forever because what happens here is um it will infect your epithelial cells and then it will migrate into your nerve cells now you have nerve cells on your skin or around your epithelial cells and once they migrate there they are going to move all the way upstream to where we have the cell bodies of those nerve systems now we have a collection of those cell bodies from uh, different um, nerve cells what we call uh, ganglions now the ganglions will be now their reservoirs now hsv1 will migrate to trigeminal ganglion this ganglion usually serve the nerves around the, the face and the head so this hsv will move there for the HSV2, which usually affect or infect um, the genitals, will move to the sacral ganglion, which usually um, serve the lower part of your body. So this is a very, very clever move because this is one of the areas where your immune cells will not get to. So they're going to hide there and they will be waiting for the time for the reactivation and cause that infection. Now the HSV viruses will hide in those ganglions, now the cell bodies that you're talking about, and they are going to periodically cause an infection by moving downstream. They'll go and come into contact with the epithelial cells and are going to form blisters. And we have several triggers that might cause this because now they are hiding there. They are just waiting for that opportune time to come and cause that infection. And one of the triggers is fever and illnesses. When you have an infection that's going on, uh, the, all of your attention or maybe the attention of the um, immunity is towards something else. So they are going to take this advantage and come back and establish an infection. Another trigger is menstrual periods. You see menstrual uh, cycles are usually controlled by hormones and hormones usually suppress the immunity they're going to affect how well your body will respond to an infection so they are going to take advantage of this situation we have other instances like sun exposure it's one of the trigger it will cause you to if you spend the whole day in the sun you're more likely going to have uh, this um, they are going to explode they are going to have this infection also stress now you see Stress usually contributes to how well your body immunity is. And again, like the whole thing we're talking about here is immunity. In case anything touches your immunity by lowering it a little bit down, that's one of the trigger. It's going to come back and cause an infection. Now, HSV2 is known to cause more episodes than HSV type 1. Take, for example, you have both of them in your body. You are more likely to get more episodes from HSV type 2 on your genital area then you're going to get uh, uh, the cold sores on your mouth from HSV type 1. Now let's go to treatment. Now herpes infection does not usually pose a serious health risk, but um, the risk might be higher when it comes to infants because of their immunity and also those people with uh, HIV and AIDS because of being immunocompromised and those with cancer because of the same, they're immunocompromised. And again, those who are undergoing organ transplants, because you see, you're given drugs that will lower the immunity. So at this point, you are vulnerable to these episodes. The treatments are there, but there is no cure. So the only thing that you need to do here is to inhibit how much they uh, replicate. So you minimize how much they are creating new copies and also minimize the symptoms. Uh, like we do with so many other viruses. Now we have several drugs that we can use uh, for treatment. Some of which are topical applications, meaning that you'll have to apply either an ointment or maybe a cream on top of uh, where you have those blisters. Others are just tablets that you have to swallow. One is acyclovir, which is quite common. And also we have varacyclovir, also very common for treating this, especially the HSV. And also we have some cyclovir. Um, the, these are the actual compounds, the active compounds 
they have several brand names so you can just go look uh, for exactly active compounds like i've mentioned in case you f you find um, something different like a brand name if a brand name is different just look at them components uh, now the drugs it's very important for you to know that these drugs do not kill the viruses but rather they are going to slow down the replication of the uh, the viruses so that the immunity will be able to catch up and uh, be able to keep everything in control. So take the drugs when you have the prodromal syndromes, the prodrome syndromes. So when you have them, this is the best time for you to take those drugs because they're going to lower um, the time when you're going to have those the herpes, either on your lips or maybe the genital herpes. Uh, if you take them when you have prodromal syndrome, they're going to reduce the amount of time that you're going to have them. Thanks for watching this video all the way up to this point. If you found it useful, you might as well give it a thumbs up. And also, let's, um, let me know what other topic you might want me to cover in the comments down below. So let's continue the conversation down there and also see you in the next video.